Welcome to the CIS 101 video on bits, bytes, and encoding. First, let's talk about a bit. A bit can be seen as a simple circuit like this right here. And in here, we have a power source like a battery and then a resistor um, that can be like a light bulb that emits light. And as long as we have electricity that flows through the circuit, then our light bulb will be on and it will emit light. Let's assume that this circuit now has a switch where we can disconnect the wire, which will prevent the electrons from flowing through the circuit. That'll shut the light bulb off. And then if we close the switch and make it touch and connect this wire, then that will turn the light bulb on. Now this circuit can represent two different values by whether or not it is on or off. And if it's on, we'll say use a one for that. And if it's off, we'll use a zero. And inside of the computer, we have lots of these little circuits and each little circuit is called a bit and a bit can be turned on or off. Now one circuit can only represent two different values on or off. And we wanna do more or express more different values. So what we do is we add more circuits. So now that we have more circuits or more bits, we can represent more numbers. And we can even represent more than four numbers. Now that we have four of these circuits, we can actually represent 16 different numbers. So based off of whether or not each circuit is on or off, we can have 16 different combinations of these circuits being on and off, and that allows us to represent 16 different numbers. Now let's assume that we wanna count higher than 15, or we want numbers greater than 15. Well, we can add one more bit to our circuit, which will put a letter in front of, uh, or a number in front of each one of these, and that will double the number of numbers we have because we have all of these numbers with a zero in front of it, and then all of these numbers with a one in front of it. So if we add a bit to our, um, to our number here, we double the number of numbers we can represent. So how do we know how many different numbers we can represent based on the number of bits we have available to us? Well, if we only have one bit available, you know that we only can allow for two different numbers, zero and one. But if we add a bit to it, we're gonna double it. So that means we'll have four different numbers if we have two bits. If we add another number or another bit in front of it, then we can have eight. If we add another number in front of that, then we can have 16. Now we can generalize this with this formula right here. Since we're using binary, um, we have two different numbers, zero and one, so that's where the two comes from. And up here is the number of bits. So if we only have one bit, then we get two to the first power, which is equal to two. If we have two bits, that's two to squared, which is equal to four. If we have three bits, that's two to the third, which is equal to eight. And if we have four bits, that's two to the fourth, which is equal to 16. So if you wanna know how many different numbers you can represent based on the number of bits you have, you just fill in right here the number of bits you have. Two to that power will tell you how many different numbers you can represent. Now zero is actually a very important number. It tells us we don't have anything. So we need that to be one of the numbers. Because we include zero, you notice that the largest number we can represent with four bits is 15. There's still 16 different numbers. It's just zero counts as one of them. So if a question ever asks, what is the largest number you can represent? Don't forget to subtract one from it because there will be zero included in that count. Now the smallest thing that you can usually store in a computer will be eight bits. And eight bits is equal to one 
byte. So computers will usually work off of eight bits together and they will call that a byte. So let's just practice some of our math to figure out how many different numbers we can represent with one byte. So since we have eight bits available, we do two to the power of eight and that is going to equal 256 total different numbers. Now what is the largest number we can represent with a byte? Well, that will be 255 because we'll have the number zero through 255. So it's a total of 256 different numbers, but the largest number we can represent is 255. Encoding is the process of taking something real and representing it using bits and bytes inside of the computer. So we already know that we can encode numbers using binary, which I just showed you. But what about characters and text and pictures and videos? How do we encode them so that we can represent them on a computer? So to encode words and characters, what we've come up with is called ASCII. And that's where we take a number, say 65, and we assign a character to that or a meaning. So 65 would be a capital A and 66 would be a capital B and so on. And then, and that is called ASCII. The only thing with ASCII is it is invented a long time ago and only with the English language in mind. There are lots of other languages like Japanese where there are different characters besides our alphabet characters and there's more than 255 of them. So each character in ASCII is stored using one byte. But if we, need, if we want to have all of the Japanese characters stored as well, we're gonna need more than one byte to store it. And that's where Unicode comes in. Now, this video won't cover all the details of Unicode, but Unicode uses more bytes so we can store more characters. And we even store all of our emojis have a Unicode number that represents them. Now, just like we did for text, we have to figure out a way to take pictures, video, and even sound and find a way that we can convert them to numbers. And once we convert them to numbers, we can store them using bits and bytes. So everything that you see on a computer has been encoded in a certain way. So inside the computer, it becomes a whole bunch of ones and zeros. So the picture in this video that you're watching right now has been encoded and you can, if you have the right tools, you can see the ones and zeros that make it up.